Uh, okay, so my name is Great da is Dane Clement. Uh, I am president of Great Dane Graphics. We became a group stall company in 2012. Um, I present seminars at the Imprint Sportswear shows, the DAC shows, SGIA show. Um, I've written two books, T-shirt artwork simplified for Adobe and T-shirt artwork simplified for Corel Draw. And what those are are step-by-step -step, uh, lessons in uh, both those uh, software packages that explains how to do artwork for the T-shirt industry. Um, when we started out, we started out Great Dane Graphics in 1991. Uh, we specialized in artwork for the apparel decorating industry and specifically for screen printers. So we would create custom artwork for screen printing, we would do the separations and we would ship out the films uh, all over the place, customers all over the country. Uh, we started um, changing or adding to that, right? So we started off with, with screen printing and then what we've done was we added production files for all the different decorating techniques, direct to garment, dye sublimation, uh, any kind of heat printing, CAD printing, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, we have been doing it for quite a while, 2005, uh, I guess, is right around the time that we started focusing on this kind of production stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here, we're going to take a look at, our, at the website, and I'm going to kind of log out of my account because I want you to see exactly what you would see if you come to the site for the first time. All right, so if you come to Great Dan Graphics website, you take a look and you'll see this. If you notice, um, you know you're not logged in if you see these two zeros here in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. So what makes us unique and different and why I think Great Dan Graphics is essential to your business is because we go above and beyond and do things completely differently than any other art house. We create production-ready files. Um, everybody else gives you standard clip art vector drawings, uh, which we do as well. So, what well, the first thing you need to do is you come to the website and you have to log in or register. So, if you um, never registered, you click the register button and sign up. Uh, if you're a returning customer, you registered, maybe you have a, and you, um, are a subscriber, you go ahead and click the log in button. And that's going to take us in to uh, your account area. All right, so we know we're logged in. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, those two zeros have now gone back to or changed to uh, how many downloads we have left for each of those pieces uh, or, or those uh, services. So right now, I have 176 stock art downloads remaining and 198 embroidery art remaining this month. So um, knowing that, let's take a look at the artwork here, uh, the website before we get started on the artwork. If I click on the, the home page here, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide this a little bit, I want you to see the full experience from the beginning. So here's what the website would look like. We're still logged in. So if I go to browse art, I can browse the artwork by stock art and embroidery art. Right? Here's our training products. We have t-shirt artwork, simplified books, training videos, and operation screen print, which is how to screen print black shirts. Software that we use every single day, uh, we sell that as well. There's different pricing for stock art plans, embroidery plans, and then both of them. You have a My Favorites section, so if you come across an image that you really like and you want to save it because you don't have time to download it now or whatever it might be, just click on a little My Favorites button there. I'm going to go to the Free Artwork button and, and let you guys take a look at this. So if you've never heard of us before and want to give us a shot, try some things out, then go ahead and hit that Free Artwork button. And these are all the files that you can download. So if you're a digital printer, you want to download this. It's a, it's a PNG. It tells us right here in the beginning. Uh, we can find out a little bit more information. You know, it's a full-color raster image with a transparent background, that sort of thing. It's best for directed garment, dye sublimation. We can hit the download button. Um, if you're going to print cut stuff, we'll take a look at, you know, just scroll through the images here. This is a screen printing color, screen printing black line, that sort of thing. So if you get a vector vinyl uh, cutter, you want to use this image here, the detailed image, because it's designed to weed friendly, and we'll get into a little bit more of that uh, shortly. You can download an embroidery file to try. And here's some layer styles for Photoshop. They're available for you. Just go get them, and uh, so is a color chart that we recommend for any digital printing. All right, so we're going to go right back to the home page, and I'm going to show you how to find images or how to search, right? So if you're looking for an image, um, this is how I would do it. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to baseball, and I'll do a search. And what that's going to do is it's going to search our entire website. It, it searched the uh, 
the embroidery, as we can tell here, so we got some embroidery files. Uh, it has searched the uh, stock art, so we have all the baseball stuff here. And if I go ahead and do this, uh, we can scroll down and you'll see all the artwork that we have available to us. So if I wanted to, though, if I just want to search the stock art, I can click on stock art or just the embroidery art, I can click on that. So let's just do the stock art for now so you can see uh, how that changes and what it does for us. All right, so with stock art selected, it's only showing us the artwork files, no embroidery files. So now, if you happen to come to the site a lot and you, you're already a customer, you start searching, you might want to search, you, might, you can change this and search just the newest images. It will still give you access to all these images, so you can see all the older stuff as well, but it just puts them in there as um, by date. So we hit the relevance, we're waiting for it to reload here. So here's our newest baseball images, and you can keep continue scrolling down and it'll take you back, you know, as we uh, do things uh, uh, every week. So that's another thing. By the way, I'm going to click on this. On our home page, I probably forgot the most important part, uh, at least what I think is the most important part because I'm pretty excited about it. So real quick, I'm going to go back and show you this. When you get to that home page, we saw the tabs across the top, and I never showed you that every single week we create new artwork and we put up new art on Tuesdays. So you go to the website, this first row right here is all our new designs for this week. And if you scroll down, this next row is our digitized embroidery art of all those uh, same pieces. So we give you artwork and embroidery that changes out brand new every single Tuesday. So you might want to check that out. Uh, all right, so right here, back to this, um, to this little guy. What these boxes are here, this shows us what the artwork looks like on different colored backgrounds. So that's just there to, to take a quick look. Yep, I want to put it on a light blue shirt. That's what he's going to look like. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so that's what that's there for. We create artwork for direct uh, for digital printing, right? So this here is designed for direct to garment or dye sublimation or any kind of banner printing. If you do any kind of print cut stuff, we do. That's what it'll look like here. So I'm going to click on this image just to show you. We add a bleed to the artwork and we assign a cut line to it. So. What that means is once that thing's printed on your printer cutter, it will print first, come back and cut, and then you weed the excess off, and you're left with just an image that does not have a white outline or sticker effect uh, available. It's just the artwork. It's really cool. So if you're a screen printer, you can um, come to this screen printing image here, and inkjet laser printer, like an Oki machine. Here's a screen print black line. This is which says screen printing black line, what that is our vector drawing. It is a clip art, typical clip art like you would get anywhere else. Uh, right here, this says vinyl cutting detailed and then vinyl cutting basic. Now, what these two things are, these are designed for your cutter. So you can cut that, uh, the vinyl material. There's, it's designed for easy weeding. So with one pull, if you notice, the whole top part of this hat comes out in one pull. This would be a second pull for the end baseball. You start with the bun here. All this piece comes out in one shot. So it's a real time saver, big time. It saves a boatload of production time on these uh, type of things. And the thing basic, what that's designed for, that's a three inch version of the artwork. That is a left chest or a hat size for you. So let's go back and explore a little bit deeper. So we can click on our digital image, for instance, we've got a full color image here. We can see the details stuff here. We got a full color raster image with a transparent background, direct to garment printing, dye sublimation, banner, uh, digital printing, that sort of thing. We can download it if we want, go straight to it, or if we can hit this customizer. If you notice, it's, if it says customize, these are the ones you can actually add things to. So with that, we're going to go ahead and create uh, a quick little design here for us. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 4th of July, since it is coming quickly, and I'm going to enlarge the size here. I'm going to choose this font, uh, you know, just click on a font that you might like. We have quite a few fonts here that you can choose from. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the solid color and I want to make it blue. So we can select the blue uh, if we want. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go back to my fonts here to get back here. So now what I'm going to do is I want to add a little style to it. So you see this effects button here. If I click on normal, well, that's it, just normal straight across stuff. But we can have classic arches and uh, vertical arcs and that sort of thing. So I'm going to choose this one. And once we do, it automatically goes to the mid-level default on the curve. Well, I think it's too drastic of a bend. So if we pull it back, something like this, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we can make it a little bit larger still and kind of put it in position. 
All right, so now what I want to do is my font outline, I'm going to stroke this thing or outline it, and I'm going to keep it white, but I just wanted to show you you can change the colors if you'd like. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to make grab this little button here, and I'm going to drag the, uh, the button over. And if you notice, that's changing the thickness of that outline. So we can create something, um, however, however, whatever we like, we can go ahead and, and keep it there. So that looks pretty good to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a red drop shadow on this. Now, we only have two effects. I can arch it, and I can change the color. Uh, but what if I do this, if I duplicate this little guy, and I'm going to move it, like say I'm going to make it a little drop shadow, put it right here. Uh, I'm going to take my font outline off for a second, and I'm going to send it backward. And what that does is it sends it to the back of my type, as you can see there. So now if I go to the solid area, and I can choose a red. Let's choose this red, right? Go back to fonts. I can position it however we want, just so it looks like a three-color version of it. So I think that looks pretty cool. And it only took a couple minutes uh, for us to create it. So now once you get something that you like, if you want to go with that, you hit this download button. And it gives us a PDF that we can download or a PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and download the PNG. And I click that button, and there it goes. So here's our image. So we just added the type to it. We got our three colors, and we, it's on a transparent PNG. And this is what we can print uh, to get ready for our 4th of July shirts. So just to show you, it's really quick and really easy. Your customers can create their own designs and send them to you, show them to you. They can't download it, but they can take a screen grab of it because uh, you have to be signed in with your credentials to uh, download anything. All right, so let's go ahead and close that for now. All right, so uh, what we'll do here is do that, and then now let's go open it up in Photoshop here. I'll explain what this guy is here in just a minute. So here's our PNG. There's our PNG with the type that we just created. So let's just go ahead and open this guy in Photoshop. And there he is. We have our full color image with the text on it. And you can see that we have transparency because we have gray and white checkers here in the background. All right. So let's go ahead and get back into uh, the website here. So here's our print cut file. And I want to go ahead and download it to show you how that works. Every single image, like when you download one, it's going to charge you one of your downloads, and when you refresh the page, you'll notice it there. Let's open up Illustrator, and then we go to File Open, and we'll go to my Downloads folder, and here it is. So I'm going to, it comes down as an EPS or a Corel Draw. So since I'm an Illustrator, I'm going to go ahead and open my EPS file. I'm going to show you what you see in here, what you might have seen in the on the website earlier. So what we do is we create a PNG full color and we grab the color pixels and pull them out. Because one of the biggest complaints I've heard for years is when they do a print cut file, somebody will come up and cut the outline, put a cut line outside the image. And when you do that, you have this white sticker look. So we take the pixels from the image, pull them, literally just spread them all out, and then we assign the cut line. So you can see this green line here is our cut line. Once this is printed on our uh, printer and cutter, it'll come back and cut it. Then once it's all weeded, this excess stuff comes out. And the reason we do this is there's no white slivers around our artwork. So if we just had our art file and we came into the bot right to the edge of it and we went all the way around our art, um, chances are by the time it comes back to cut that, it will be moving on our machine uh, and it will just, as the blade comes, it'll come out and come in and that sort of thing. So what this does is it compensates for any of that uh, problem. Works out really, really well. All right, so this is a screen printing color, and I'm going to download this one. This is an EPS file. Now, I'm just going to have, I want to explain this because this is a um, one of the confusion areas. So this is an EPS file. So if I click on details, this is a DCS 2.0 EPS file. Now, what that is, that is a fancy EPS file that allows my alpha channels or my separations to be inside a full color image. And when I hit, when I go to print it, it will print from this full, one full color image. Not sure what that person is. Keep calling me for. So uh, we have a printing spec sheet. 
um, that comes with it, I'll show you that as well. So we're going to go ahead and um, download this graphic. There's my one thing that will charge me here. All right, now let's go back to Illustrator. Get rid of this. All right, so what I want you to look at here as I open this thing up, if you look at my swatches, this is my standard swatches palette. Um, but as I load in this image, if I go to uh, File Place, I want to place this from my Downloads folder. And here's my screen print file. Now remember, this is not a vector drawing. This is a, uh, an EPS file, which is a raster EPS. But notice there's two files in here. So I'm going to click on this PDF for you. And I'm going to pull it up. Every single screen printing image that we have comes with this print spec sheet. So if we print these colors in this print order, and we use these mesh counts, line screens and screen angles, when we do our films and our screens, we will get a quality print. Every image tells us this. Now, this is seven colors. It's not really seven colors because our second one is a flash, so it would print in six colors. We separate all of our designs to print in six colors or less, and I'll explain that in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and click on this EPS. We have to make sure that this link checkbox is on, and we're going to place it in the Illustrator. So right now it's loading in our image. I click him in here, and there he is. Now, what I want you to... Uh, notice is it looks really washed out compared to what our full color image looks like but it will print like our image it prints in full color this is just a preview in Illustrator which is not the best same thing with Corel draw you can uh, import this into Corel draw as well and the previews would be kind of bad but it the data is there so right now we could add type in a vector program if we want and if we colorize that type with these colors here if you notice this row of colors have has popped in since so there's a number one white base. Here's our number two black, our red, blue, gold, and highlight white. All right, so now all of our separations come into our program that goes here. So if I wanted to, I'm just to show you this really quick. Go to File Print. If I um, choose my Accurip to 4900, I'm going to choose my custom here to get my full page. So now if I go to Output here, I'm going to output my separations host based, and then now you can see that my white base, my black, my red, all these things are already loaded in. So if I hit print, it will print all these colors to my printer. So it's a really handy, um, really neat file format. It is a desktop color separation file. All my separations are built inside of this one image, which is uh, pretty awesome. All right, so what else is there? Let's go back to the... Uh, to the website and take a look. If you have an Oki printer, you can download this file. It is a PNG. However, if you're an Illustrator user, you will have to put a vector outline around it um, in order to eliminate the white toner in this uh, open area. Um, screen printed black line, here's our vector line. If I wanted the uh, drawing, you see it's an Illustrator and an EPS file. So if I download this file, uh, again, I'll take a look at it in Illustrator to show you exactly what it is that you have. Let's go ahead and get rid of this guy, and then we're going to go ahead and open the Illustrator file. There's my Illustrator. I hit open, and we're looking at our vector clip art like you would normally or uh, uh, are, are used to. So I can choose uh, bits and pieces, um, colorize them with whatever colors we want, that sort of thing. Um, so here's a for instance, I'm an illustrator, so if I choose these things and I want to make them red, I can click on that. Problem is, that said this is CMYK red, and there is no spot colors in here. So if I double click this little icon, I'll get this window. So if I choose this process color and go to spot color, and now I hit OK, if you notice the little icon has changed, it's got a little dog-eared white corner with a black dot. That is now a spot color, which means when I print it as a screen print, this will, the red will come out on its own screen and the black would be on its own screen. So we, that's how you would colorize these bits and pieces. And it works exactly the same way in CorelDRAW, just using your custom uh, spot color palettes. All right, let's take a look. We're going to vinyl cut detailed stuff here. CorelDRAW, EPS, and Illustrator files. Uh, these are vector files, so I can download it as well. So you can see the difference there. We'll go ahead and place it back to my downloads here, cut detail. 
I want to use my. I actually don't want to do that. Actually, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to show you something here. So if I come in the file place here, because this is a another good little lesson for you. So make sure my link checkbox is there. I hit place, and here's my image. Well, this is my vinyl cut file. So if I wanted to preview, see what my cut lines are. If I hit uh, go to my preview, here's a view outline. There's no vector drawings there because we placed an image. So if, just if you do that and you notice that it's not available to you, that's what happens. So what we need to do is we need to open uh, the file in Illustrator in order to get our vector lines. So if I do that now, if I show you the preview, you see the difference. One of those small little bitty things that can get confusing or forget one way and you load it in, it doesn't work properly for you. So um, now, uh, now it will. All right, so we're getting really close to um, this is the same exact thing. I won't open it up. Uh, it's just the simplified version of it. All right, so next thing we'll talk about, let's talk a little bit about the plans and the pricing. So if you wanted to check out the artwork and go to stock art here, these are the plans that we offer. You can, just a stock art, you can buy it per month or you can buy it as a full year uh, up front and we give you a free month in that price point. The embroidery art is, is very similar, so it's $14.99 a month or $165 for the full year. And if you want both, you can do both of them at $32 or $31.99 a month and then $352 for the full year. Now when you do this, you get, if you notice my page here, you get 200 stock art downloads per month and then 200 embroidery art files per month. So um, that's 400 pieces of artwork for $32 a month. Uh, no one comes close to this pricing. What we do is, and the reason I do it this way is because we want you to treat this or think of this as your Netflix subscription for your business. You got so many, it's 200 designs. I'm sure most of you uh, won't come close to 200 designs in a month. Uh, I know I didn't when I had my shop, right? It's so, it's a lot of information, it's a lot of files. But that's what we wanted. If you need it, just go get it. Don't concern yourself. Don't worry about maybe running out. We only have a couple left, or I'm only getting 10 pieces for you know that sort of thing. That's why we went with such a high number uh, to make sure it's a no-brainer for your business. So basically, at $18.99 per month, you can download 200 pieces of art, and those pieces of art are specifically created as a production file for whatever decorating you do. Uh, no one else does that. We're the only ones that I'm aware of that create individual production files. Uh, and we put new artwork up every single week. So next Tuesday, be sure to come back to the website and you'll see a whole new group of artwork here at the bottom uh, for you. All right, everything I created works, or that I showed you, works in Illustrator or CorelDRAW. So to me, it doesn't matter what program you use. Um, you're welcome to use either one. So with that, I guess we can open it up to any kind of questions and see if there's anything I may have missed and didn't show or uh, that sort of thing. Um, one of the questions is the, uh, whether or not the designs will carry over to the following month if they don't use their subscription amount. No. Uh, so, so the answer is no. They do not roll over. They're 200 pieces per month. They would, so those numbers here at the top would, uh, of your image is letting you know how many you have to, left to download. We'll just uh, go back up to 200 for the next month. Also, uh, if you download a customized image and then realize that you need to change the customization, does that count as an additional download after customizing the same image again? No. So if you go to my account here, um, the button here, watch. There we go. So you can go to your downloads history. Uh, well, internet seems a little slower. There we go. You, you can download the file again or customize it again. Does not count against against you. How do the separations work in Corel? Uh, I use simple seps. Yeah. So I'm not familiar with simple seps. We do our separations with Separation Studio, um, and our files are saved as that DCS 2.0 file that I had mentioned. Uh, we can import that into Corel Draw, uh, just like I did in Illustrator. You will see the image, and um, you, the image, the separation colors 
would bring into would come into your custom spot color palette. Now, Illustrator, I mean, uh, Corel Draw does not automatically do it as easy as Illustrator. So the, basically, the workflow would be in Corel Draw, you would go to the File menu and you would import the file and look for that EPS file, right? That DCS 2.0 EPS file, and bring that into Corel Draw that way. You go to File Import, and when you do uh, what you have to do in order for Corel to recognize the individual colors is to go to the file menu and come down to print. Now you're not going to print anything at that point, but when you do that, you'll get a little window that pops up that says, hey, wait, I found this little alpha channel that says white base, and you click the button that says okay. Then it'll put another window up, I found the black, you click okay, I found the red, white, blue, that sort of thing, uh, and just keep hitting okay until they're gone, and then cancel out of the print menu, and then you've just loaded in all operations inside of Corel and you can use that one color preview uh, to create your text and that sort of thing. Just remember if you want if your image has red in it and you want type to be on that red screen you colorize the type with the actual color that comes in uh, the spot color from the image. Like I showed you in Illustrator it just automatically loads in Illustrator and uh, once you get into Corel Draw it would, uh, it would pop up in there as well. We have someone on here that says that they do DT DTG printing, they'd like to know if they can change the colors of the sports artwork on the images to match the team colors that they currently work with. Yes, great question. So um, let me try to do that. Let's see. Let's take this one here. I'm going to download this football. I'll try to go ahead and show that to you right now because that was an excellent question. And it actually just reminded me that I did forget something else here. So this guy here, here's a for instance. We have, um, this is our five color file. So we create artwork in six colors or less for screen printing. I'll get right back to you, DTG, in one second. This is a five color file, so if I turn that off, this is my black and my white printed. What we did is we took our red screen, which you see here, and we just put purple ink in it. So that's a three color print, and then we put soft hand in the white here, so we cut our, our white ink 50-50 so that shirt shows through, and that's a one color image. And um, here's a, our vinyl cut file for that same design, by the way. All right, so let me go ahead and open up that image for the DTG question. What a great question that one was. All right, so here he is. We're going to open this file, for instance. And as long as we have in our layers, here's our layer selected here, right? So if I go to the image menu, come down to adjustments, and go to hue saturation, what I can do is this. So I'm going to change this green to match a different team color. If I go to my master list here and I come to greens, it's super easy to change that out so we can match whatever our team uh, happens to be by just doing this. Just moving the, the, um, the hue slider will we'll make those adjustments. So there you go. If your team's blue, we can do it that way. If you want it brighter or more saturated, we can saturate the slider up and I can brighten it up or uh, make it even richer. So great question. Can the subscribers use the PNG files on their website to demonstrate the designs that they're going to offer? Okay, so another great question. So the, the, the short answer is no. You're not, you can't take the PNG files and upload them to your website. However, if you do customize it, if I take this image and I put um, a team name or a school name on it uh, to make it a finished design, then they can take that and put it up on their website. Someone who uses a Cricut Explore Air and they do dye sublimation with an SG400 printer. They're curious as to how they can use this artwork for that application. Okay, so the, the dye sublimation file uh, application, you would just use the, um, the digital print file. So you would use uh, the digital printing image, which is at the top of our list. Uh, and as far as the Cricut file goes, um, let's just do this. Let's click on something here. I'm not I'm not exactly sure what file format the crickets uh, need, but the D and the the direct the uh, die sublimation you'd use this digital printing file. It's a PNG. You can the, any RIP software or or print driver for the machines usually uh, have no issues with that. And for your vinyl cutter, if you got a little Cricut cutter, I'm sure Corel Draw EPS or Illustrator, you probably you may have to open that up and save it in a, as an SVG or or whatever that driver requires. I'm not familiar uh, with that, but we do have customers that use it for that purpose, so I do know that it's doable. 
Is your download history still available for download after your subscription expires, or is it only available while you, while you are a current subscriber? Uh, that's a great question. I think it's it's not sure. We'd have to find out and get an answer for that because I don't remember uh, what happens once you cancel out or eliminate your subscription. I do think they, if you download the files to their computers, you're, they're still licensed uh, to use them. So that sort of thing. They become yours once you download to your computer. Um, and this is something that we can we can definitely find out and uh, try to get to that, that customer if you send us an email or something. Do the Photoshop files come with layers already? Okay, so another great question. No, the Photoshop files do not what we have is all of our artwork is on one transparent layer uh, and there's a couple reasons for that we had our already our images or we take a look here at the bottom of my screen it's 58.6 megabytes that's a huge file so if we have multiple layers in this thing that file grows and it's just it gets to be uh, too much right it's just there the files are too large plus it would take us forever to get one painting done so if you can imagine like this image back here if it was a paint um, we would have we move this helmet and we'd have to finish out that piece underneath it. It just it becomes cumbersome and at some point we had to make a decision at, and uh, so no, they're not on multiple layers. Now if um, if they want to, they can and they're familiar with it, they can use Photoshop to clip away uh, images and, and like this this uh, for instance, this right here, they can pull out this helmet away from this background if they wanted to do it that way. You could definitely do that. Referring back to when you changed the colors for the jerseys, um, they were curious as to which file type they would need to download in order to do that. Uh, P, the, the digital PNG, because we what we did was we had, um, here it is, we're going to open it up. So this image, this particular image, is our digital PNG file. That's for directed garment dye sublimation or any kind of large format uh, full color printing uh, capabilities. So this is the file. Now, Dane, there are a lot of questions that have been coming in. I don't know how much more you want to present or or if you want us to take these questions offline. That's that's your call at this point. Now, let's keep going. As long as you guys are good, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, there's a question about adding an outline for a PNG for use on an Oki printer. Yeah, so... We're going to have a video for that. It's very, uh, so let's see. I'm trying to think if I can do it quick enough here. It takes a couple of minutes. Um, you would have to create a vector file, though, um, and for that Oki printer. I'm going to create a video for it. I've already, we're already working on that, and um, it'll be up on the website. Uh, we should have it up on the website next week. We have someone who prepares their files uh, for DTG printer, which is a Cornet printer, uh, with white on the uh, two channels, the base layer and a highlight layer. Uh, how will I handle white with your files? My files uh, will print on the Cornet, no problem. Um, they'll need, you'd have to change, you'd have to do this, go to image mode, change it to CMYK because Cornet, uh, as far as I'm aware of, is still the only digital directed garment printer that requires a CMYK file, not an RGB. So once you take this file into the Cornet, uh, Cornet RIP, um, it will handle the whites on their own. In fact, uh, Cornet ships with some of my images uh, in the machine, in the driver. So if, you ever, if you've ever printed basketball shoes, <laughs> those are one of ours, by the way. And I knew it was Cornet. I was just testing you on that one. <laughs> there was a question early on that was asked. I'm not. I'm not sure if it got answered yet or not. Uh, but someone had purchased some of the artwork in 2015 on um, CD. Is there a way to filter out those particular images from what you're offering online so he doesn't replicate? Uh, no, there's no specific way to filter it out. It, you would just have to do the search and then just not choose those to download. And all of the editing to the PNG files be done in Corel Draw also? Editing to the PNGs, yes, in the image effects. 
CorelDRAW does have a, a hue saturation adjustment. There's someone who uh, just commented that they, they really do love the site. Um, they, they're going to just ask one favor. Uh, when you hit the back button, it says it's taking them all the way back to page one instead of just back to the page where they were just on. So they just wanted you to know about that, but they wanted you to also know that they really do love the site. Okay, well, that's good news. Thank you for uh, liking and enjoying the site. Hopefully it comes in handy for you. Uh, and that is an, a feature that uh, I thought was fixed. Uh, I thought it was pushed a week or so ago. I will find out. So we're working on that. It's, if it's not fixed now, maybe try to... Uh, refresh or, or you know delete your cache uh, but but um, it is something we're aware of and I thought it was fixed so if it's not it might be up there very shortly and there's a, they're asking for the name of the book again for Corel it's t-shirt artwork simplified um, so um, it looks like this blue cover here and it would be the Corel version And that seems to be the last one. Oh, no, wait, here's one that just came in. How many images have been created or added since the book four was printed? Uh, because this particular person has books one through four. Okay, so hundreds, um, probably over 300, I would assume, at this point, for or more even, because uh, book five is out there. That's 250 right there off the top of my head. And we've since added a ton of work. So every week we create new stuff and, and put it up there so it's been quite a bit hundreds all right so we're wanting to know uh, do you do any all-day hands-on classes at shows uh, they took a shorter one and, and they had learned so much but they'd like to get a, a full one day or two day class with you so what we do is we I do have a I do a full day workshop at the imprint and sportswear shows typically um, uh, just not, I can't remember if I have them in Orlando or if it's going to be in Fort Worth uh, the rest of this year. So there's a full day on Photoshop uh, and then my other seminars. We are working or thinking about trying to put together some uh, all-day classes and training. Um, yes, so right now I don't have anything on a calendar, but it is something we're considering. And if they keep coming to the site, once we have that available, it will be uh, noted on there. And then our final question that we're going to ask here is, uh, someone's interested in being able to send images directly to Transfer Express. Is, do you have that uh, availability already set up? So no, there is no automatic workflow to get our images to Transfer Express. But um, if they were to download the files, uh, you'd have to like um, the vinyl cut files would work with no problem with the easy prints, the black line, that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I probably, in the digital print files, they would have to send for their digital um, transfers. So it would, this would require, the full color stuff would require a different technique that they can offer you uh, versus the black uh, or, the, you know, the simplified uh, graphics. But, um, so there's no automatic process. You'd have to just upload it yourself. Okay, Dane, that wraps up the questions that we've got from the viewers right now. I uh, just want to remind you, uh, I believe you might have some sort of a special promo code to announce and uh, also to remind the folks about some more of the uh, in-depth training that you're going to be offering. Yeah, tell you what, Joe, can we um, can we get Jeff in on that? So, yes, for you guys coming in here, we will uh, let you try it out on us for a free month. So uh, there is a code available. Um, I do not happen to have that code. Jeff may have it. But we uh, we obviously have your information. We make sure you'll get it. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to try a full month on us for uh, hanging out with me here uh, this morning. Okay, Dan, we'll, we will make sure that that uh, is sent out to everybody who joined the class today. Uh, you get now to give your final thoughts and wrap it up, and then we'll you can close it out from there. All right, great. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much for those of you that in attendance today. I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to find out uh, how great Dan Graphics can really help your business. Um, we will, we're available for questions. If you got a, any kind of art question, you shoot me an email and say, hey, I'm, having, I'm struggling with this, or you know, can you create uh, this type of artwork, for instance? So if, you, um, if you're a customer, of our, a customer of ours or become one, we request that you let us know what you want us to do. So if you say, hey, I need more manatees, I need more dancing or cheer images, those are the kind of things that we love because we create 
the artwork that our customers want. So if you request something for dance, it goes on a live active uh, list that we have here in, the, uh, in our offices. And if it's requested more than once, it moves up that list. So obviously, whatever at the top of that list has been requested multiple times, and we create the artwork uh, that way. So uh, please let us know if, you, if we're missing anything or something you really want to see. And we, while we don't do custom-specific work for you, we would absolutely uh, try our best to get it done and get it up online for you. So with that, thank you for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it. Sorry about the technical difficulties we had here in the beginning. But um, all right. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.